Today, we are going to talk about the real number system. The concept of rational number is easily understood. And yes, rational numbers can be easily identified. All we have to do is to identify two integers, make sure that one is not zero, and all we have to do is to get the ratio of these two integers, or we get the quotient. And so, we get a rational number out of this process. We can think of a geometric representation of the rational numbers by using a line, but for sure there will be gaps in the line. Our awareness of these gaps may be made possible through geometry. Let's take a look at this illustration. This illustration shows the beauty of patterns in mathematics. It starts with an isosceles right triangle with each leg measuring one unit. And of course, it's hypotenuse. If you will compute that using the Pythagorean theorem, you'll get square root of 2. And as we all know, square root of 2 is irrational. Yes, there's a proof for that. You might have encountered a proof in number theory. And so we cannot find a fraction or a ratio of two integers that will be equal to square root of 2. And so there should be a gap in that line of that represents the numbers. So square root of 2 is between 1 and 2 and this is for sure irrational and we cannot find a fraction that represents square root of 2. You can continue doing that by using the pattern as shown and you can generate several numbers that would represent the gaps that I mentioned a while ago in the geometric representation of numbers. So it's clear that through geometry, we are aware that there are irrational numbers. And so we need to come up with a bigger set of numbers. And this set that I'm referring to should contain the rational numbers, those numbers that can be represented by fractions, and the irrational ones, those that cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. And this is where the real numbers come in. Real numbers are considered to be the raw materials for analysis, but the question is, what are real numbers? Real numbers can be visualized as a line. There are infinitely many points in a line. In the same manner that there are infinitely many real numbers, each point on this line represents a real number. If we have two points on the line, we are sure that there are infinitely many points in between these two points. In the same manner that if we identify two real numbers, there are infinitely many real numbers in between these two real numbers. But the definition of a real number is still a challenge. That is why we refer to the contribution of Richard Dedekind, who described the formal construction of real numbers. Dedekind's contribution is related to the axiom of continuity or completeness. It states, let real numbers be divided into non-empty disjoint sets A and B, such that all elements of A are less than all elements of B. Then there exists a real number P, such that P is between A and B, or shall we say P is less than or equal to B and greater than or equal to A. For every A, an element of A and B, an element of B. So we can see P here as the one that determines the cut. It divides the set into two parts, A and B. Now our narrative will focus on dedicated cut. S be a set of rational numbers that have the following properties. Number one, S is a non-empty subset of Q that is bounded above. Number two, S does not contain its upper bound. And number three, if S is an element of the set S and we have here R, which is a rational number, is less than that element S, then we say that R must also be an element of the set S. So this simply uh, describes a set S that is determined by a cut 
in the line that represents the rational numbers. No? But of course, this line would have holes or gaps because we are just talking about rational numbers. Irrational numbers are not yet included. Um, as you can see here in the illustration, the set S is represented by uh, yes, a ray, no? shall we call it as a ray with gaps, um, with color red. So if, if S is an element of, of that set and we can see another rational number, which is R that is less than that element S, we say that R must also be an S. So it means that all of these rational numbers to the left must be included. Yeah, that is just simply the definition of the set S. Real number is then determined by associating it to a particular set S. So now if you are asked to define or determine a real number, all you have to think of is to um, associate that real number with a set S, which is determined by a cut, not the dedicated cut. And a number that corresponds to that cut is a real number. For us to determine a real number, we have to consider a set S. Um, this set S is determined by a cut, and this set S contains all the rational numbers that are less than any of its elements. So you can see in this illustration the um, geometric representation in red, and if you can identify that particular set S, no, then you can identify a real number. And that real number is actually the dedicated cut. You have to take note that uh, this cut, this dedicated cut can correspond to the gap as shown here in the illustration. It means that the dedicated cut, which is a real number, may be irrational, which, as I mentioned a while ago, is represented by the gap. So this is a very good definition of a real number because it um, clearly shows the inclusion of rational and irrational numbers. Real numbers can also be described with certain properties. We have the field axioms or the axioms of algebra. These are commutative laws, associative laws, distributive laws, the existence of the identity elements, and the 0 and 1, and the negatives inverses. And these axioms are established in the context that we have a set and two operations, addition and multiplication. So these properties simply show that the set of real numbers is a field. One may add, subtract, and multiply real numbers and divide by non-zero real numbers. But one thing that sets the real numbers apart from other fields is that the real numbers are ordered. We use the axiom of order as a guide in order for us to determine if a set is ordered. The axiom states there is an order represented by the symbol less than defined on real numbers are such that we have the following properties. Number one, if A is less than B and B is less than C, then a is less than C. So we are familiar with this structure. Um, it looks like a transitive property. Number two, for every two real numbers, exactly one of the following holds. A is less than B, A is equal to B, B is less than A. So this is a trichotomy property. Uh, only one should hold for a field in order for it to be an ordered field. Uh, for example, we have two numbers, 3 and 4, and we all know that only one holds for 3 and 4, that is 3 is less than 4. It is not possible for 3 to be equal to 4 or 4 to be less than 3 if we already know that 3 is less than 4. So only one of these three um, conditions would hold if we have two real numbers. In number 3, if A is less than B, then A plus C is less than B plus C for any C, and for sure C is a real number. 
And the last one, if A is less than B and C is a positive real number, then when we multiply A by C, that will still be less than the product of B and C. So this is the axiom of order and we have to establish four conditions. The first one is transitivity. Number two, the, the trichotomy. Number three is simply adding the same real number both sides. Number four is about multiplication of the same positive real number both sides. We then define an ordered field. And this is simply a field with such an ordering as shown in the axiom of order. Remember that the set of real numbers is an ordered field. So we asked a while ago what are real numbers. So now we have answers. We can identify real numbers as dedicant cuts. We can also use geometry to represent the set of real numbers, thus we use a continuous line. There should be no gaps in that line. We have also um, stated a while ago that the set of real numbers is a field, specifically an ordered field. Thank you for learning with me and remember to hit like and subscribe.